Hi there, and welcome to Real Estate Divas. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, picking your partners, picking JV partners and how to pick them correctly. And we have an expert on that subject with us today, and we'll be speaking to her right after this. Hi there, and welcome back to Real Estate Divas. Today, we have a very special guest. I'm so happy that you decided to come on and share some of your great wealth of knowledge with us today. Thank you, um, Julie. Julie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Julie Pitra. I'm a real estate investor. I'm also a realtor, and I've gotten into coaching. And so it's been a big journey. I've learned some valuable lessons by doing things the incorrect way. So I'd love to share what it's like to do it the correct way. And, and she really is amazing. <laughs> oh, I yeah. still remember the first time I met you. And I, I think I actually called Amy Sayre, who, who's in our audience today. But, yeah. you, know, you know, and I said, you got to get down here. I go... This amazing investor was sitting in my class. Yes. And that was, it was like a Sunday morning. And I think you had caught like the Saturday. Yes. I caught it the was, Saturday and then went back to see you again on Sunday. went back to take in another like two hours of pain. <laughs> it, was it was, it was illuminating. It was illuminating. Yeah. It, I mean, so we go to lunch and I'm like, oh my God, this, this chick's the real deal. Well, I walked up to you and I was like, what does it take for me to have a little more of your time? You want some dinner? You want whatever? <laughs> You know? <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm hungry. I, I can I have lunch. I, I know, I'm going to go get lunch. You want to go have lunch with me? Yeah, but you were, I mean, just a wealth of knowledge even back then. And I'm trying to think about how many years ago that was. Four or five. At least. I mean, I hadn't been in the game that long. And what is fascinating to me is there are people who have been in this a lot longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And when I hear them speak, I'm like, ooh, don't listen to them. Don't yeah, do it. Don't do it. I can't out them. I'm not, I don't have their gravitas, but mm -hmm. it's like, well, you could go broke that way. You could go to jail that way. Maybe that's not the best path to pursue. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't speak <clears throat> oh, that from a stage. You mean, you mean investors that like to skirt the gray area line, you know, and not, not do it. Oh, you know, it's, it's whole, it's not illegal. Well, <laughs> there is a lot of gray. And so I've gotten more comfortable in the gray the longer I've been in this. But you have to do it to the limits of your own personal integrity. And I guess that this might be my limit. And then some other people's limits are a little, a little bit further, further along. Yeah. And that's okay because that's a risk they're willing to take. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I've learned through trying to coach people is like, this is who I am. If you want to do something a little riskier, you need to choose another coach. You need to choose another mentor because I can't teach you how to do that. I would be very uncomfortable. That's exactly. good. Yeah. That's good. Well, and that's one thing that she and I have talked to, uh, about several times is the integrity whenever we're talking about investors in general, mm -hmm. the integrity of investors. There's a lot of them out there and we've, we've done several shows on that, that um, it gives the ones that do have integrity a bad name. You know, it because really typically that you always hear about the bad stories, right? The you always hear about the negative, and word travels fast. Um, so always do things right, and yeah. I always say that the real estate investing is a small world. It's a very small, especially world. if you're you know in North Texas or in the state of Texas at all. If you do something wrong, immoral, unethical, people are going to find out about it. And you know what's. It's what's interesting, and I have to just share this little story. There is someone who approached me and they said, oh, you know, we think you're wonderful and you're, in, you're investing, you're knowledgeable. And I said, well, how do you know that? And he said, well, I've never heard anyone say anything negative about you. <laughs> and I was like, maybe they just haven't heard of me. He's like, no, people discuss you, but nobody say, says anything negative yeah, about and you. And, and, and I think that. it was the very next week <laughs> <that> <laughs> someone got on Facebook and just called me out saying I was a liar and a thief. Oh my goodness. Right. The, like it, I was like, wow, bip and then bam. Yeah. And they didn't call me. They didn't, I've never talked to this person to my knowledge, 
but I was doing something with another investor and they, they called both of us out as thieves. And I was so angry. I said, well, you know what? I will go on Facebook. I will stream this live. If you have something you want to say to me, step up, get on the show, get on the, the, the Zoom, whatever. I don't go behind somebody's back and talk about them without having unloaded fully to their faces. Exactly. Right? So like, was, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you the opportunity chance. to say all of this and back it up. And I will also talk. And then I was on like an hour and he didn't show up. <laughs> and it was kind of impromptu. I was like, yeah. hey, I'm here. Um, and then the other person, he had called me. You know, we were both thieves. And he called us some other things, too. I said, back on with her and we talked. Meanwhile, he's texting back and forth and commenting. And I told him, I said, whatever your beef is with that person, call them, work it out. Exactly. This does not concern me. I did what I did to help to the best of my limits of integrity. This is why I did it. You say you feel, you feel this person stabbed you in the back, but you need to have a conversation with them Absolutely. about that. That right. is not my deal. So today we're talking about how to pick your JV partners. How to pick your JV partners. And why you are the ultimate best guest, guest for this is, <laughs> is that, yeah, you have a horror story. Not I'm, to laugh at it, but it's not, I mean, no, it, it's not but, a laughing matter. But I mean, it, like you said, learning from your mistakes, sometimes that's the best way to and, learn. And the fact that you're willing to come out and, talk and about share it. your mistakes, because a lot of real estate investors don't want to ever, you know, I love the ones who say, oh, I've never lost. On a piece of property. Okay, that's ridiculous because everybody's lost. <laughs> well, you know, until that partnership, I never had. So I just thought I was golden, <laughs> impervious to any kind of mess up. And boy, that my self-esteem take a beating, my confidence took a beating. Um, but I learned some lessons. And it's my belief that if you go through any kind of obstacle or trauma and come out on the other side, you've learned something. We can only hope. Here, here, I love and exactly. If you whatever that is you've learned, it's going to help you go to the next level even higher. So that's how I'm viewing it. And my situation resulted in litigation. I brought suit. Um, the humbling lesson was that I didn't prevail. We weren't able to convince the judge that what had happened was um, a, a severe blow and unwarranted blow to me. So I will say this: if you're thinking. Well, if things don't go right, I'm going to sue. Please call me. Yep. Let's talk about that process. Right. It's expensive. You have to have money it's to mount expensive. a lawsuit. You have to have time and you have to be determined because it's not like I'll sue and tomorrow it's resolved. It's a grueling process um, from which I learned. And then um, you will go before a judge that may not understand your business at all. And my situation was very complex. There were a lot of different projects, things that your average judge isn't going to understand. You don't get to have a real estate professional hear your case. Your story. Yep. And they're just like two people that should be able to work it out. I'm done. Which is basically what happened. He did not really rule and say, you prevailed or you prevailed. He was like, yeah, just leave it as is. Well, and, and I mean, you reached out and contacted me <clears throat> yes, after you realized that things went really bad. Mm -hmm. And you were... You got the properties, right? Or I, well, the mortgage notes. I mean, everything was just. It was a lot. So I JV'd with people who wanted to do flips. Now, I had started out wanting to focus on buy and hold, but they did pretty properties. And I said, okay, I'm a realtor. I can be a part of that. Then I started investing in their projects. So the first thing I will say is there needs to be some kind of congruence between you and your JV partner. I really wasn't as interested in flips as they were. That's all they wanted to do. I wanted to provide them with money. I had invested on a passive way, in a passive way with other deals with and, people. And you who had were, you had made a lot of money yeah, doing done. passive investing with multifamily. Yes. Well, that's a completely, completely different, different arena. Different and arena. And it's set up differently and papered differently. The agreements papered differently. Yes. And you're protected differently than you are when you go into some one-off or even a couple of projects with someone. And one thing that I learned, if you're going to do a flip with somebody and you're going to put money into that deal, make sure you're on title or you have a lien of some, or because something. otherwise you're relying on them to give you back your money. And if they don't, and you were not, 
you yep. were not on title. I was not on title. And so that was the number one. Yes. So you're JVing. You're supposed to be passive. You are giving money, mm -hmm. but you were not on title. I was not on title. And one deal in particular, this was um, quite painful. I contributed money to the project to be done. I didn't get that back. As a part of our JV, I was the realtor on the deal. I didn't get paid for that. Wow. And I didn't get any of the profits, and it was one of the few deals that actually made money. Made money. Um, and it started out, I said, hey, why don't you renovate this, and I'm going to own or finance it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then they got into it and said, well, we can't make any money on that. And I'm going to back up. One of the things I pride about my, my reputation is the things I do, I do well. Ask around if you're going to JV with somebody and make sure they pass the smell test. That somebody you know, whose opinion you trust, gives them an okay, go ahead and do business with them. Because it is a small community, small world. Did you find out after the fact that they had a bad... They were, as far as I know, inexperienced. They had done a couple. They had done them okay. Um, but after I started working with them, particularly through the litigation, I found out some things that if I had known... You would never have done. I would never have done business Well, with and that again goes to, <clears throat> had had you poked around, you, mm -hmm. you saw their success. Yes. And, and were like, okay, I've already worked with you as your realtor mm -hmm. on the flips, so I know you. Right. And just had you done a little bit more due diligence up front, then maybe you would have found out some of that stuff? Well, now I believe you should either have known someone for years or you do a background check. Yep. A background check. Background check. So I've got someone I can call. It's like, hey, I need to run a background check. Yeah. Somebody. So how many deals did you give money on to these guys? Oh, can I just leave it at double digits? It was uh, double digits. Yeah. Double digit properties. Yes. What did you walk away with? Losses. Losses. Massive. 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 Just across the board. Yes. Losses. There was the first deal made money. So and I got gotcha. some of that money. Yeah. The rest of them didn't make money that I got any of. The rest of them didn't get money that I got my investment out of. It was awful. I would have been happy to have said, oh, it was like a six figure loss. Wow. You would have been happy to say that? Compared to what it was, yes. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Compared to what it was. And the issue is, is that not many people can come back from the loss that I suffered. You were, when I saw you, it broke my heart. And yeah. I'm like, because you had been larger than life. Yeah. And it was just like, and you did, you, you said, I've got to start over. And, the, and how many people start over? Yeah, most people don't. How, I mean, it's not it's really, not it's a success story to be literally burned to ashes and then rise like the phoenix. Yeah, and you know, I try to take my lessons and grow from them. I, I've tried to do that all my life. You, That's one of my strengths. This one almost brought me down. I was, I had lost all confidence in my judgment and my abilities. I didn't do any investing deals for like a year. And then one day, one fell in my lap. I was actually out doing something that I love, which is garage sale shopping. <laughs> and um, the girl there was like, oh, my uncle wants to sell the house. And I was like, oh, I could buy this house. Ooh, I'm interested again. So that was what got me back into it. Like I bought that house and, and I've done more and more since then. And it's, I've got good mentors. That's another thing. I have a good investment advisor. My attorney, even though he didn't, we didn't prevail, I learned a lot. I've got a forensic CPA that I work with, good bookkeepers. I listen more to my mentors. Um, I was a little hard-headed. I know what I'm doing. Well, I mean, Golden. so much, so much <clears throat> success, and that's. I mean, it, it's great for confidence, but it also it, it sometimes makes us lazy. Yes, that we, because now we know what we're doing. We don't. But I, that's sweet. That, thanks for thinking of me. I know you're concerned, but I got this. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> so uh, let's yeah. let's take a quick break. Okay. Um, and go to commercial, and then okay. we'll come back with part two with Julie Pitcher. Thank you. Awesome.
Welcome back to Real Estate Divas. This is part two of how to choose your JV partners. We're here with the very experienced investor who Thank does you. JV again. I do them on a very limited basis with my being mostly in control. And I explain to that up front. I say, hey, I have been burned. And unless I feel that you know more about what I'm doing than I do and will do it better and will be, then I have control. Exactly. If you don't like it, well, that's okay. You can find somebody else. So let's, when you are picking a JV partner now, because mm -hmm. you've had a terrible past with that, mm -hmm. when you do it, what are some of the things that you look for? You've already mentioned congruence, so that, that what their goals are are the same as yours. They don't have to be exactly the same goals, but they must be aligned on that particular project that you're getting into. And I have gotten better with asking those questions beforehand and saying, okay, what is it you want to get out of this project? Now, do you, do you now insist everything's in writing? Yes. Everything's in writing, the agreements in writing, the yes. LLC, I'm assuming if you're JBing, then mm -hmm. y'all are putting it under an LLC and there is an agreement there yes. that everybody signs off on. Yes. And you're the managing Yes, individual. I'm the one that can encumber the property. I'm yes. the one, yes. Gotcha. So you have control. Yes. It's your money. They're doing all the work, but you have control. No, I have you money are... in it. They have money in it. We have the part that my money is in gets, will split, but then there's the Julie part but separate from the money part. Yep. Which is nice. Which is nice. I mean, I'll tell you this. Um, when you're choosing a partner, you have to have some idea of where you need help. And that JV partner should be able to help in the areas that you need help. Otherwise, you're doubly vulnerable, and mm -hmm. that's a problem. And you need to do a lot of research into that person or have known them, known some personal deep things about them. I made that big mistake because I looked at their pretty house, but I did not look at the people. I'm not going to say that my former business partners that I feel shafted me were bad people. I don't know. I realized I did not know them at all. But I will say, in retrospect, we had no business being in, in business in, together. In business together. Now, one thing um, you said whenever in the first segment you were talking about, now you've partnered yourself with an attorney, a mm -hmm. forensic CPA, mm -hmm. um, and your mentors. Yes. Did you gather all of those people prior to, or was that because of what you just went through with the past JV? I gathered all those people as a result of what I went through, mm -hmm. did some shuffling around. I seek advice. And the one person who could have helped me avoid the situation with my previous business partners, whose advice I did not listen to, was my husband's. He was like, mm. And so now it's like, y'all got to pass the sniff test. Or <laughs> this else. is my husband. He's got a yeah. good smeller. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and I know you know this about me, too. I had a very bad partnership yep. when I started out. And everybody told me. Everybody told you? Everybody told me. And people would be like, do you know what you're doing? Yeah, but Do you not know to me. who it, you're it, in it business with? It won't happen to me. I, that's what I said. Yeah. I go, it's yeah. not going to happen to me. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> different. This is different. I'm I, I'm bulletproof. It's kind of like a bad Why would relationship. That happen to me? You get into that bad relationship and everybody's like, don't, don't you know their history? Like, are you sure about this? <laughs> no, ours is different. This is different. Well, my forensic accountant talks about something called the fraud triangle. And it's really interesting when you, when you start looking at people this way, I was like, okay, if someone has the opportunity, so access to your money or whatever, mm -hmm. if they have pressure, some kind of need that's making Driving. them act in such a way, and if they're capable of rational, rationalizing to themselves that this is okay. And you know what? If I had had that in my mind, I would have seen people who say, well, you know, it's their fault this happened, their fault this happened, I deserve this when they haven't really done anything to deserve that. If you can rationalize that you can take something from someone else and you have a financial pressure, which they did, and if you have opportunity to get to their money, which they did, it was inevitable that that was, gonna that was going to happen. 
Now your mentors, where did you, because I find that that was, uh, that's something that I didn't do right away. One, I don't, you know, I'm guilty, just like a lot of people out there, of never, not wanting to look like an idiot, right? You don't want to look like an idiot. I do my, I do my studying, I do my, you know, uh, get online, read the books, whatever I've got to do to not be, not look dumb, right? Right. So I think I'm doing my part, but I wouldn't reach out to people as a mentor or approach people as a mentor. Um, I might sit in their class or I might, you know, listen to a seminar, but I wouldn't approach people. Now I see such a value in it. I mean, that has cha since changed and it's really brought me a wealth of knowledge that I couldn't have gotten any other way. Where did you find your mentors? Um, so my first real estate mentor was our investment advisor told me, yeah, go, why don't you get into some real estate, get some education. Um, the next big one, can I mention the name? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is, um, Jawad Dashti. He does a lot of investing. Really? Mm -hmm. And he embarrassed the heck out of me, um, in front of a networking event, a couple hundred people. And so I realized, oh, I don't know what he knows. And it was that we were both at a property and he even let me go like, go have a look first. And if you don't want it, I'll take it. And I passed and then he went and got it. And I was like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Everybody thinks he's so smart, you know? And then when he talked about how that deal was structured and I was like, oh, wow, I wonder what deal that was. And then he said, and Julie Petra was there and she passed on it and look at all the money I made. And I was like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I don't hold it against people for know knowing something I don't know. Yeah. Like, just like you, yeah. I'm walking up, you know, something I don't know. And I want to know it as exactly. well. Will you please tell me? And if you won't, I've gotten enough of a bone where I'll go seek it out for myself. Which is great. Yeah, that is Which is awesome. great. I mean, why I was so impressed with you is just because, yeah, you were, and you were down. And I could see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, yeah, let me see if I can help you out with this. And I couldn't. I and like, I'm like, this is just bad. Yeah, that was bad. And it was bad. But. You're back. I'm, back. I'm like, you're back. You're investing and you're even considering JVing with people. I am. I'm in the middle of a couple of JVs right now. Good for you. Yes. Good for you. Yeah. With your own stipulations. With my own stipulations. So walk, walk everybody through like now with your new knowledge of how you would, how you pick your partners. Like, where do you start? You know? Well, first let me back up and say that, um, how I even picked my spouse is probably different than most people pick their spouses. <laughs> it's not like, oh my gosh, he's good looking and I'm in love and he makes me feel happy and giddy. No, both of us were extremely strategic about, oh, are they going to work? And both of us had our own pros and cons that we had written out before we decided we would be together. Now, I didn't tell him about mine until we'd been married a couple of years and then yep. he told me about his. But both of us are analytical in choosing partners. And so I brought that back to the forefront. Not enough people are analytical about the people they let in their inner circle, whether it's a spouse, a partnership or whatever. So I went back to the whole, how would I have chosen a spouse? Okay, what am I getting out of Did this? Did you background check your husband? Well, I didn't have to because <laughs> we were, it's funny, we were in grad school, yeah. right? And before we started dating, I was very friendly with the dean. And I was like, oh, so what do you think of this son? Person. This person. I did ask. I did yeah. ask. Yes, I did. So you asked for, you asked for a reference. Yes, mm -hmm. I did. But you didn't get, you know, you didn't bring out your forensic accountant. And... I didn't have that back in the nineties. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's a recent, recent. I mean, we've gathering. been married 25 yeah. years. So yeah. I, so, but a, a forensic CPA, I can't imagine you're going to go to that length before you get in. No, I'm going to get the background check. And then I'm going to let the forensic CPA overlook the progress. Just of to the make deal. sure that yeah. there is so in, in Jaylene is the story. I'm not going to out mm -hmm. anybody on this one. Um, but I have somebody who I'm kind of partnered with in a way. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And he came, he called Jaylene and he called me because we had interviewed this investor and he asked, what do you, what do you think of this person? Mm. And I was like, well, you know, why don't you call Jay Lee? Because I didn't know her. I think it was Jay Lee's guest. Turned out it wasn't Jay Lee's guest. It was like our cameraman's guest. 
Oh. And our cameraman brought the guest mm -hmm. in. And so here we are interviewing this person, thinking that the each of us had brought this person in. Neither of us know her. And it turns out, yeah, she's got a criminal hmm. background for fraud and for like check forging. Yeah, multiple suits. It was And it's not even her name. It's it was something. It was something. It was like the name that she was using is not her real name. And she had just said, oh, I'm going to go by this now because, yeah, I've got a criminal background attached to this. It was, it was uh, definitely eye-opening once we had that conversation. I was like, we might want to vet our guests. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how did well, we come up with this you, person? How did you come yeah. up? And, you know, one thing you asked about going through a JV partnership, I'm going to say this. If you don't have an attorney involved on your JV partnership, what you have to realize is you're, you might open yourself up to people who are not trustworthy, who are willing to do nefarious things to you and your money. Just because you won't doesn't mean that they person won't. isn't on yeah. the other Unfortunately, side. Unfortunately, what if your first bad JV experience is an attorney? Is an attorney? Well, when I say your attorney, I don't mean an attorney. Right. I mean your, your attorney. Your attorney. The one that you've vetted and brought on board and that you think is protecting your interests. Just because someone is, is an attorney yep. does not mean does that, not mean that you can go partner, partner with them? No. I'm, I, I learned that one the hard way. No. And I have heard um, horror stories about people in partnerships with attorneys. And the attorneys, they know how to get around you and get what they want. Well, the people that I had been in business with, they were very adept at getting around. I was trusting and they protected their interests. And they made sure I was pretty much handcuffed to getting my resources back. They were mine. Um, I've let them go. They have them now. And oh. you get very angry. Yes. But anger can stymie for a while. So let it go. Because I was like, I'll never JV again. And then something came up. I was like, okay, I'm going to JV under these circumstances. So you, what, you win or you learn. Yes. Yes, you learn. And you have to. I'm grateful that I came back from that experience. I'm not grateful for the experience. I am too. I'm grateful that I came back and I've come back stronger and that's got to be the, the bonus. So when stronger and smarter, stronger. So investigate your potential people, make sure you're on board long enough for that project, get your team to look at it. You should also insist that they get their team. If they don't, that might be a red flag in itself. If they don't have a team of people willing to help vet their projects, it could be they're inexperienced, which is fine. Mm -hmm. If you get into business with someone who's inexperienced, make sure you're not also inexperienced in the same way, right. you know, bring something together. Um, don't allow that fraud triangle to be there. Make sure you're protected. Um, make sure everything's in writing. And if I can say this, make sure your contract that you have with these people have teeth. Because if you don't have remedies for a breach in your contract, your only way to get anything is to litigate. And that is not the way to go. I don't intend to litigate. I sometimes jokingly share, you know, and this is a joke, ha ha, assassins are cheaper than lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a joke, which means I do not want to have to go back to an attorney. Not that I'm willing so to hire So when you say assassin. teeth though, so what do you, like, I'm assuming you've got clauses in there now. What does what is your attorney putting in there? What is an example of teeth? Yes. So anyone that signed a contract with anybody will see a clause that says, in the event of a dispute, you have to undergo binding arbitration. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's one of the teeth. You don't want to have to go to court and litigate. Not just mediation. Yeah. Binding, binding arbitration. arbitration. Okay. Right. And then you'll have in how do you choose your arbiter, you know, under what circumstances and what sort of things you can actually go to the arbiter about. These are the kinds of things that need to be in your contract. Excellent. You know, that's all excellent advice. Right. Also, you might want to have in there uh, return of capital. So if you put money in and that person can't give you your money out, well, you need to have another way to get that money somehow. And then here's the question I have gotten since then. Don't you trust me? No, no, <laughs> no. I did the trust thing. I'm not doing it again. Well, no offense. What my attorney has told me multiple times is whenever you're talking about trust, it's not a matter of trust. This protects you too. 
you know, I know what I'm capable of, but this protects you too, as far as it, I'm bound as well. This isn't just for you. This is for both of us, you know? Well, I find in general, people aren't good communicators yes. when they talk about money, which is crazy because they will talk about everything else under the sun, the queen passing and Kim Kardashian's latest haircut <laughs> ad infinitum, but they won't spend the time in talking about, okay, if I don't do this, what are you going to do? What is expected? How much am I bringing? What happens if we go over budget? What happens if we go over time? What happens if this doesn't make money at all? Are we sharing these losses equally or is this loss all on me? And I stupidly signed an LLC agreement that did not require the capital to be paid back to me. That's my oversight. I own that. Yep. Yeah. That. Because but I trust now it. Now you know. Now I know. Now you know. I trust it. And here's another thing. I signed these contracts that like, this is what everybody's going to do. And this is how the money's going to be distributed, but they didn't have to do it. And if they didn't, what was my recourse? So that is the question I always ask. What is my recourse if you don't do what it is that I want you to do or that we've agreed that we will do? Yep. Well, I mean, that is one of the things that, um, like I said, talking to my attorney over and over again, there, we don't communicate mm -hmm. enough. This is for that, you know, to, to hammer out all those details. Um, but I do like, she reminds me, because I'm, I'm usually too nice and too trusting. Uh, she reminds me all the time about, no, we need something that actually protect, if it's too vague, okay. if it doesn't have any teeth, then it, there is no protection for anyone, specifically you. <laughs> And I've done a few things. Like one of the things I've gotten into is uh, investing in crypto. Mm -hmm. And you can very easily screw yourself, not protecting yourself in crypto. You get these phrases that that's the key. Anybody that has that can have access to your money. And since I started investing in crypto, it's amazing how many people are careless with their pass keys. I'm like, you let somebody else see that? <laughs> hmm. That's wow. crazy. That's so crazy. you have to be vigilant. And if you don't have the energy and the dedication to be vigilant, you should not be money, JV. You should not be JV. Interesting. And then can I just say one more thing? I don't know yeah, we're yeah, yeah, time, yeah, we're But um, just one more thing. If you're going to do a JV, say on a flip, that conversation has to happen. What happens if it doesn't sell at this price? What do exactly. we do now? What do we do now? What's our game plan? Is there a plan B? Is there a plan B? And when I'm watching several people, they're not my partnerships, and I'm like, yeah, y'all don't have a JV, a plan B. <laughs> don't know what you're going to do. Um, yep. I'll just sit here and watch. And the funny thing, there's someone I know that was in a partnership, and I told him years ago, I was like, you see what I'm going through? Protect yourself. Protect yourself. Mm -mm. Protect yourself. You and your partner need to talk. You need to be on the same path. You need to understand what it is you both want. Oh, we're good. Money was flowing. Okay. Things hit a bump. Yep. Now the partnership is no more. I mean, it, it's sad. And I've seen that like three times now since I've been through my deal with someone who's cared to share the details with and me. And had communication just happened and all of the questions, they might still be partnered. They, you know, wouldn't have hard feelings. Well, I possibly. know, for example, possibly, possibly. Yeah. Working with someone like me, I've been told, oh my gosh, you're harsh and you hurt my feelings. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And there was one time in the past few weeks, I was like, oh, did I say something incorrect? Like, you am I wrong? You your big girl panties on. I don't go with that first, <laughs> yeah. but I do get there. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, was I incorrect about something? You know, was I inaccurate? We're, we're, you know, let's get that conversation. Well, you should have understood. Like, that doesn't help me. No. Mm -mm. Pretend I am linear and I don't understand any kind of inference. Tell me what I did wrong. Where, would I, where did I go wrong? And if you can't get there, then I'm like, well, if you don't have a better way to do this and you have a problem with my way and you particularly have a problem with the way I said we're doing it my way, I will invite you out if that is your choice. I will buy you out. But I am not changing what I think is my best judgment and you have nothing to offer. Yeah, I mean, it, right. it has to be a discussion. It has to be a you know, discussion. It, it's not just you hurt my feelings or you shouldn't have done yeah. it that way. Or you make me feel like I'm stupid. Well, everybody's stupid in a particular yeah. way. 
I mean, look at me. I got taken for lots of money. Yeah. I'm trying to let that go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I can let that go, I'm uh-huh. like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it's uh, it's been an education, and I think everybody is definitely, if you've listened to this, you've had some really strong points of, because people don't have that conversation. And I don't think it's just, it, it's in couples, it's everything. You mm-hmm. know, people do not have a conversation about money. And that one's one of the most important ones to have. Yes, it is. Now, and, and seriously, thank you for coming and sharing your story well, I because hope it was valuable. <laughs> it is exceptionally valuable. You know, you letting know. us learn from your mistake. Well, uh, yeah, you real estate investors, Painful old mistake. Real estate investors tend to be a, a bragging lot, you know, and they will. We only hear the good. We stuff. We only hear the good stuff. We only hear every time that we win, you know. But really, it's a loss, and it's the losses or the mistakes that we made. And I have made tons of my fair share. <laughs> I mean, tons. Yep. Where I go back, you know, I think back to what I did 10, 15 years ago, and I'm like, did I re- was I yeah. really that dumb? <laughs> well, that's how, that's one of well, it's not the only yeah. way you learn, but you do learn from being willing to try something without knowing everything about it. I will say there is um, there's one investor in particular. I was at a networking event. I was listening to this person, and I thought to myself, you will get people in jail doing what you're doing. And I said to my friend next to me, I said, I should be speaking. I know more than this guy about this topic. And she said, yes, you should. <laughs> there you like, go. Oh, okay. okay. So I've started speaking a little bit more about it. And yes, it's embarrassing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that yeah, I don't feel a little twin. Do you like, think that you are yeah. the only yeah, one out there that yeah. this no. has happened to? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Honestly, it's, seven figure loss. Yeah, that's awful. That's but, terrible. But there are there are investors who go to jail. Yep. For and they take advantage of so many people. They do, and they're, that's what they're trying to do, is take advantage of you. And I was at a party with a friend of mine, and I was like, yeah, I lost so much money on this deal. And she goes, well, I lost, I lost nearly $10 million on this. And I was like, oh, well, no. <laughs> that did me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was right. like, I was feeling bad, but I mean, good. everybody makes a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does, and, yeah. and it's just it's wonderful and refreshing that... And it's cathartic to get it off my chest. I bet it's it like, is. Yeah. No, I, I really bet it is. Well, and just sharing it is is a way to uh, kind of push your way through it. You know, being able to share that, and if anybody can learn from it, anybody can take a nugget from it. Then it's it'll you're it'll helping. to help somebody avoid what you went through in the future. Absolutely. I would love for that. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. It's wonderful to see you. And thank you all for tuning in today. Um, be sure to, you do speak. Go ahead and tell everybody how to find you. And I know you have the clubhouse that you do and you you are speaking and mentoring on a regular basis now, right? Um, yes. Okay. So I actually started a group called Pitronomics. My name is Pitra and it's a, it's a 10 part strategy to grow, protect and transfer wealth. Nice. And I do talks every Thursday at 6 p.m. Sometimes I have guests. Sometimes I talk about my strategies. You too are yeah. invited to be on it. <laughs> and um, I talk about everything, the mistakes I've made. There's a lot of transparency. Awesome. In that group. Bravo. So, I love it. Bravo. And that's on Clubhouse? It's on Facebook mostly. I do okay. live stream within the group. I'm going to start live streaming onto my personal page. But if you look for the group, it's Pitronomics on Facebook. Okay. My name is Julie Pitra. I'm also a realtor. Mm-hmm. And my phone number is 214-284-0632. If you care to text me, because I rarely answer calls when I don't know the person who's calling. Yes. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm like, uh, don't know you. Voicemail. Yeah. <laughs> well, my voicemail's full and I'm not emptying it because yeah. I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And I'm Kristen Gross with Capricorn Mortgage. Send me your owner finance mortgage notes to buy. And I'm Jay Lee Thompson with Texel Real Estate. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Be sure to like and follow and check out our other YouTube and podcast interviews. Luckily, today was a wonderful interview, and then some of it's just us talking. (laughs) Thanks so much. Have a great day.